We've uh, just just with the the sort of jungle hardcore edge to it. Direct. This is Phil. I'm from Source Direct. We're making drum and bass music for the next century. Is Check the rooms. Here? We're 20 now, but um, we started getting involved in the scene when we were about, I don't know, 14 or 15, because I was listening to tunes at school and I was sort of the odd one out where I'd be into my techno and house and breakbeat, and like, other people were sort of into their pop sort of thing and their indie thing and it just wasn't me I was more into that sort of thing that no one was into I was always looking for that cutting edge like music so I was just into that a, a long time ago and then we started doing parties illegal parties in the area where we were living created a bit of a storm with the police and all that sort of thing we just used to like do our own thing we just used to like are you still in school now I kind of left school before the exams came round it was, uh, had like a little nervous breakdown. I couldn't deal with being sitting in a class and someone telling me what to do all day, day in, day out. And I was completely not interested. I could read and write and I can add up and that's all I need to know. I sort of just started to smoke cannabis and mm. sort of realised that, that the, whole, the whole college was just like a load of bollocks really. So <laughs> I just sort of left, got involved heavily into music, which I was into before, but even more, even more deeply and then just met up with Jim and here we are. We started making tracks and uh, there was kind of like a funny sort of meeting with Rupert sort of in the past because he was actually uh, releasing a couple of tracks as studio pressure to which we had bought, you know, just in the previous months. It was like, fuck, you know, you're making these beats as well, same way. And he liked Goldie and all this. We were like, well, you know what I mean? We know each other. It's like, so we sort of got on immediately, us two and Rupert. And, you know, that's where our friendship came in. There's a lot of big artists who are blatantly like Bjork or everything but the girl. Um, there's loads of, sort of pop artists who are having drum and bass remixes done. So I suppose that's the beginning of it being big. Jamera Choir as well. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't say that the actual scene is that big. I mean, there's, there's not much specifically in the style that I make there's not much in the way of clubs for that music I mean Metalheads at the Blue Note is one of the main ones there's, there was Speed at the uh, Milk Bar the Mars Bar near the Astoria that was that was uh, sort of more musical rolling style drum and bass but I wouldn't say the scene was big because both of those clubs are quite small clubs and the bigger events are sort of like happy hardcore and and like the more sort of danceful, like orientated stuff. <laughs> it seems like the the big artists want want someone to do a remix to to show that they 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 kind of they want they want like the, the the cutting edge of music and you know and it, it makes them a, like it gives them a bit of street credibility. What, what I suppose kind of I suppose and it's good for it's good for the people who are doing the remixes because it gets them you know if the, if the person buying the uh, therapy record turns it over and he's drum and bass on the other side then they get a little bit of a clue about what it's about. 
we had two BMW M3s. Dark um, <laughs> machines. Uh, we just like them because they're fast. I mean, you feel it. You, you have that sort of superiority on the road. It's just fun. It's quite boring around here, really. At the end of the day, you've got your beats. Um, you know, you can you can take your drugs and whatnot. But again, that's constant hassle. And people know who you are with the police and whatnot because they definitely keep their eye on us. Definitely. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Can we've you been, give an example? Uh, well, we've been done over quite a lot of times. Been pulled over and completely searched and been followed and do you know what I mean. The whole bollocks. And police one, around the house, the whole lot. Yeah. We feel in Hertfordshire. I mean, there's no clubs or anything that play the music we like. There's there's only a few things to do really. We feel that we just like to drive around in our fast cars. We make our beats. We like to chill in these sort of quiet country pubs. We like to see girls, and that's about it, really. There's not much else to do. It's quite boring, like the country of England. As you can see, we have now entered the world of Jim and Phil. <laughs> it's our humble workplace. This is where we sit day in, day out, night in, night out. What's it like to, to have a studio uh, at your parents' house? Most of the time we work on the headphones and we've had, we have had complaints, I mean even on the headphones because we do have them extremely loud because we like the sound. When we have the headphones on, we like the sound to like bury inside your brain. <laughs> so it's just bashing your brain around your head and that's the way that we can really feel the drums because a lot of people say when they put a tune on in their bedroom one of ours and they're just like listening to it I mean it doesn't have its real impact but once you've got it at an extreme volume because the tune is so squeezed and compressed it, it just it's like a it makes your brain like a sponge and it's just like can you show us? what you want to hear it? Do you want to see me? Yeah. How loud I can take the headphones? Okay, fine. Should we throw it directly into the arms now? Yes. Uh, it's quite difficult to like define your own sound. You sort of you sort of search for it. You just like go back to your like old influences like all the old breakbeat that we've listened to, all different styles of like uh, jazz, like fusion jazz. Are you ever uh, inspired by anything else than just music? Do, do you see any images in your head while you're making music? Well, you can't really, you can't really describe an image that I would have. It's a feeling inside it, you, man, that's there that comes out through the music. Yeah. It's a feeling like when the music suddenly changes this way, it's like, yeah, yeah, you made yourself feel it needs to go this way and it kind of takes you there and the music then forms itself around the way you want it to feel. And it's like, yeah, you can have something like suddenly like bang, it's just there, it's just like, do you know what I mean? It's fuck, yeah, got that little shock there and there's something you can hear in the background slowly creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. And then suddenly you start to focus in on that while the sounds are still going and it plays tricks with you, do you know what I mean? And that's, that's your soul there, helping the listener listen and fucking go, shit, yeah, he's going this way, he's going this way. 